Welcome. We appreciate you coming. I would like to invite my son, Daniel Adunyao Warku. Daniel was born and brought up in uh, California. He attended uh, Pacific Union College, where I work, and he earned his uh, bachelor's degree in finance. He then went to graduate school and earned his MBA, also in finance. He is a gifted poet, a passionate athlete, and an effective teacher. I'm a proud father, you can tell. <laughs> I'm honored to be his father and uh, he is our keynote speaker, Daniel Adunyao Orko. You can't choose your you can't choose your parents, or you can't choose who parents you. Um, you're kind of left to fate, or the Almighty, or however you want to explain um, the way that you get your parents. Uh, but you can choose those who you who you mentor and those who you give back to and those who you decide to help, you do have some control over that. Um, I was lucky, and I'm sure many of you were as well, uh, to get a pair of good parents and uh, even a brother too, you know, that was a lot of luck there. <laughs> Sister, we got that, that's great. And, um, you know, but, but you can actually actively choose who you, who you decide to uh, go out and sacrifice uh, your time and your effort and your resources to go and be a sort of parent too. Uh, so a lot of thanks to all of you for deciding to do that for somebody else. And it's kind of a motivation and inspiration for me. And I'm thankful that I was asked to come and be a part of the event. So I appreciate it. And I have um, a couple poems that I want to read to you. Uh, one specifically uh, inspired by this event, and another one just of me. It was from a few years ago. I was trying to uh, express what it's like kind of growing up between two cultures and reaching back and trying to figure out of where are you from, where are your roots, uh, where do you come from, what's your heritage, and that kind of thing. My brother and I grew up in America. We were I was the first in our family to be born here. So we had a... Uh, uh, a mix of cultures that, that helped uh, shape us. So it was an interesting, uh, I think maybe unique, a lot of our friends here are also first generation Ethiopian Americans and balancing a rich Ethiopian background. We went to all the weddings, we went to a lot of Ethiopian church when we were growing up. We had a big community, a big extended Ethiopian family. So that's one big side of, of what raised us. And then we went to American schools and we went to English speaking uh, preschool, grade school, high school, college, and um, you know, so that also shapes another side of, uh, of my brother and I. Uh, so balancing those two out was, was interesting. So the second poem is me just trying to express that. Um, and most of these are themed around charity, and charity has been a, a big part of my life. Uh, I've been the receiver of it for, for um, much of my life, and thankfully, I've watched uh, my dad. He was also a, a big receiver of charity uh, from his early days and his youth in Ethiopia. Somebody went out of their way, went to Ethiopia, uh, sacrificed their time, and they could have done something else with their time. They could have worked another job. They could have done anything. I mean, invested their time and their money and their resources somewhere else. And uh, they chose to go there. And by, by, I think, maybe a little divine plan, their paths crossed, and a life was changed. And he went back later on, and my mom had gone through a similar, I would say, miraculous uh, uh, course of events that changed her life as well. And many people 
not just missionaries uh, that specifically went across, but many people sacrificed of their time, of their resources, of their options that they could have uh, exercised in their lives and went over there. And her life is a product of that as well. So my brother and I are kind of the second generation. We never you know, specifically saw, other than meeting these, some of these people that went so far out of their way, we never saw the, the nitty gritty, you know, the, the actual blood and sweat and maybe some of the tears and frustrations that maybe these people experienced. But we hear the stories of it from our parents, and that gives us a good peek into the past of, of uh, what, you know, two, two, three people, a small handful of people uh, expressing some charity can do down the road. You know, when they plant the seeds, you're not really aware of maybe what it can do later on. You're not aware of some of the things that um, might, might be yielded by those actions. So we're kind of the product of that. And so... I still am very, even though we never saw it firsthand, both of us are still very uh, thankful and we express a lot of gratitude to the, to the individuals that went over there and helped our parents. And we, we live the lives that we live today based on the sacrifice that these people that really we don't know that well uh, endured. So that's kind of the theme of the first poem. So without any more background, I'll get into these poems. Uh, the first one is called Someone Like You. So where do I start? What can I say? I suppose I'll start with the obvious and thank you all for coming here today. You could have spent this priceless time in almost any other way, but instead your choices have shown you're willing to love someone you've never known. Charity is a treasure that's reaped long after it's sown. I've seen its effects my whole life from my youth till I was grown. And I learned something about it that I'd wish to share. People who give it, folks like you, they come rare. Most people live life without a worry or a care. They pass by outcasts and crippled beggars like they weren't even there. But I'll digress. That's neither here nor there. Because for all of you, it's clear. You're here to show you care. It's because of someone like you that so many see another day. Your charity might be the reason that they get up and pray. It could be the only reason that another life is not thrown away. It might give hope to a righteous man to keep on living the right way. The full effects of you all deciding to give today, they can't be measured. No how, no way. And it's because of someone like you, moved by something righteous and true, to give up their means for someone they never knew, leaving that person asking, why me? And gratefully wondering, by who? But today, that nameless man is standing right in front of you to prove that charity like yours can make impossible dreams come true. Moreover, its receiver receives a brand new point of view, that there is nothing greater than sharing love and that love returning back to you. All of this is possible because of someone like you. You see, folks like you, they're an aberration, a group of people who understands charity's sensation that it plants in man vital seeds of transformation and eventually secures his citizenship in a spiritual nation. It makes the worst days of his future seem like a vacation because he's living life with a new lease, not afraid anymore of when he'll decease because the charity that was shown him and that he's shown since, it will never cease. It will grow and yield sweet fruits like sympathy, empathy, and peace. Captives held prisoner to ignorance and hate, charity can release. It's because of someone like you that starts this butterfly effect, that people changed by charity later sit back and reflect and think to whom much is given, much is required in return. And charity, it's given free, not for its giver to eventually earn. It's because of someone like you we're here gathering today so that a man once changed by charity can fulfill each receiver's responsibility by asking you, his fellow men, please help me. Please help me show some desperate people what their lives could really be. Help me provide to those without a hope the means to make them free. Help me give those chained in ignorance a brand new reality. Help me do what anyone would do who's seen the power of charity because after all, it's because of someone like you that the life I now live was afforded to me. Charity. Thank you.
Thank you. My roots. The sun beats down on a shirtless back, working tirelessly, ignoring pain and fatigue. Survival is all that matters now. This is the land of my roots. The views are indescribable by all words known to man, sights only seen in a wandering mind's fantasy. The plains and mountains are like Zion on earth. This is the land of my roots. There are beautiful faces smiling in every direction you look, feasts involving communities, laughing, fellowship, dancing, praise. This is the land of my roots. Men that walk like they're walking on water, Women as beautiful as the most captivating sunset. Pride runs deep in the veins of us all. Ethiopia is the van land of my roots. So I thank you all. Thanks for coming here today. Thanks for taking your time to listen to the stories that we have today. And thank you for your charity. It, it made me so. Hopefully it'll make a lot of other lives a brand new gift, so appreciate it. Excuse me. I'm so sorry, I need to interrupt you for a minute. We're going to off-road here a little bit. And um, you're going to be surprised because you're all going to be singing. Um, <laughs> but it, fortunately it's a song that you all know. And it's a song to celebrate two special birthdays here today. Adu's 70th birthday and Amber's birthday is also. We're gonna, we're gonna light up here. So you all know how to sing happy birthday, right? Let's start. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Audrey Amber. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> um, I guess we have cake now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. My, my wife and I have been truly blessed. A peasant boy from rural Ethiopia and a peasant girl also from rural Ethiopia, are here. And uh, this is truly a miracle. I started school when I was 15 and a half, a long story, because I was not supposed to go to school. And uh, I'm a college professor today. My wife's story is even more remarkable. She started first grade when she was 18, one eight, 18 years old. She is now a registered nurse in these United States. So we're blessed. And that's what motivates us to do what we do. 
the boys and girls we left behind never got the opportunity we did. Many of them, probably most of them, would have been better than we are, do greater things than we have done. So thank you for this surprise. Um, and the program continues. <laughs> <laughs> And now, my son, Tadele Adunyao Orgo. Tadele was born in Napa Valley, raised in Napa Valley, also went to Pacific Union College, earned his uh, bachelor's degree in uh, marketing, then decided to uh, earn more degrees, so he went on and got his BS degree uh, in nursing. <laughs> By the way, uh, I neglected to, uh, to say that uh, Danny, as we affectionately call him, is Dean of a Tennis Academy in Irvine, Southern California. And Tadella is uh, uh, an employee of Loma Linda University Medical Center, and he works in the emergency department. Tad. Taddy or Tado, as I call him affectionately, is also a gifted artist. He's a songwriter. He writes his own lyrics. He plays the piano plays the guitar, he sings, arranges his songs, and he is, is gifted, just like his brother. So ladies and gentlemen, my son, Adela Adunya Wargo. So in life you have a lot of choices and a lot of directions and a lot of roads you can take and those roads lead to other roads uh, and at some point you start looking back on your life at least this is what I hear because I'm not there yet but um, at some point you start looking back at your life and analyzing which roads you took and which one had meaning uh, and which one didn't have meaning and what you wished you would have done and and if you could have gone back what you would have done um, and so I was kind of reflecting on that and looking at my own life, looking forward and seeing which, which road I want to take uh, and what that's going to look like to me. Because at the end of the day, the things that, that I want to keep close to me are the things that matter. Uh, and, and as Danny said so eloquently earlier, and everyone has said that's been up here, uh, the purpose that everyone is here are the things, the reason everyone's gathered here. That's the thing that at the end of your life, when you look back, those are the things that add purpose to your life uh, when you add purpose to someone else's life. And so this song is called Me. I met a young man and I heard him say, I'm heading to the top, I'm on my way. A one way to get in a heart of steel. But we traded love for an empty deal And love he tried to find But his heart he sold and he left behind And though he couldn't see Say I gained the world, what I lost was me I met an old man and I heard him say I wish I knew then what I know today I saved my heart wouldn't go so fast I tell the young man that he was my past And the heart that he left behind Will soon be the thing that he tries to find And when, no, oh yes, when he sees Say I gained the world, what I lost was me yeah, I gained the world, what I lost was me Life can be so hard Hard sometimes I met an 
Look my way, said he walked this mile. Said keep coming, don't you turn astray. And never ever trade your love away. Cause then you'll find the key. Love is the one who will set you free. And in no yes, in the end you'll see. Say I lost the world, what I found was me. Yeah, I lost the world, what I found was me. Yeah, I lost the world, lost the world, yes, I lost the world. Lost the world, lost the world, yes, I lost the world. What I found was me. So I want to sing one more song. And, and the song is called uh, Love Is All. And uh, the reason I, I want to end with Love Is All is because the whole reason that gives meaning to what we're doing here is that it's a gift that comes with love. Uh, and anything that is, is motivated with love and, and by love, uh, the fruit of it is good. Uh, you eat together with people that you love and you value the time. Um, and when it all boils down, it all boils down to, to love. Uh, and, and to me, that's why love is all. Say that I 
love you Love is more than something See, love, he has a name And Jesus know you're listening And I'm oh so glad you came and showed us Love is all Love is all Love is all, love is, love is all, said love is all we After many years of dreaming, hoping, and wishing, my dreams came true. I was able, with a lot of help, from my wife, my friends, and people of goodwill, to foundations, made it possible to build a school in my village. My relatives and childhood friends never went to school. Neither did their children. But their grandchildren are now in school. So we're breaking the cycle of illiteracy, which is huge. So my, let me just give you a, just, a, just a, a sample of what actually we started with water wells. Next to us, oxygen, water is vital for life. One of my childhood chores was to go to a river and, and uh, fetch water for the family and me. And then the dry season, that took almost three hours, an hour and a half each way. And the water was not clean. We had stomach aches and all kinds of problems. Water is vital, but if it's not clean, it's the worst carrier of all kinds of disease. So we have a water well for the community, a water well for the elementary school, and a water well for the high school in the area. This is the school in the middle of nowhere. This is my old stomping ground. I was a shepherd. I plowed the field with a pair of oxen. And uh, this is my area. It used to be forest covered a mere 50 some years ago. And not anymore, unfortunately. The students that are attending our school. Precious kids. Speechless, <laughs> literally speechless, and I'm not usually that. Yeah, that, you, you know, I do. That way, yeah. He doesn't like That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
And then after the speeches and all that, I met my childhood friends and my relatives. And it was crying time, it was laughing time. Um, it, was, it was overwhelming, truly overwhelming. I know these people. Look at that, picture perfect. These are friends I grew up with. This girl, this lady, didn't have brothers, so she was a shepherd with us. She was one tough girl, let me tell you. And she had to be to survive among a bunch of boys. And I saw her. She never went to school. Now, the school that I showed you first is completed. What we're working on right now is a vocational school. A vocational school is a, a good fit for rural kids. They're disciplined, they know how to work, and the country needs a lot of uh, skilled labor. There's a lot of infrastructure building right now. And so, this is a good fit. When we went there, those were the buildings that were up, and this building in that space that you saw is almost completed. They're going there, putting the windows and all that. And after this one, we have one building left. Price tag, $75,000. The good news, half of it is pledged by a foundation, dollar for dollar. So $37,500. Half of 75,000 is already pledged. Another piece of good news, we have raised $8,000 of the remaining 37,500. So that leaves, what, 29,000 something? So we'll give you a tally uh, um, after a while. See, I'm building different angle inside. This is the hut I was born in. My father, my mother, my grandmother. This was her hut. My mom went to her house, and this is where I was born. This is um, my aunt, my mother's youngest sister, and her husband. This guy here, Burku, can you get up? Can you rise? No, it's not. That's that guy. I'm a couple of years older than him. I was out of the ship, and the only chance to get a picture that age was lost. Somebody came from the town and took this picture. When I went back and saw the boys and girls following cattle all day, I said, what a waste. How many geniuses, geniuses are following this lifestyle and going to their graves unrealized? So sad. When I went in uh, last November, I saw this girl, she was a shepherd. She was taking care of uh, her parents' cattle. And I bent down to her level and I said, why aren't you in school? And she said, I wish, I wish.
<laughs> I came across a farm I could not resist. That's what I did once upon a time. Today I live in Napa Valley and I own this house. How big is that? What a difference education makes. The only thing that separates me from my relatives and my friends is education. I hope you saw a glimpse of uh, what has been done and what can be done. One person can make a difference. One person saved is one person saved. We can't save the whole world, but we should try to do what we can. And if everybody tries to do that, imagine how much good can be done. That Frio is a kindred spirit a passionate person for other people. He's in charge of Ethiopia Reads. 75 libraries and county. And he goes to the rural, to the remote areas on horseback, muleback, donkeys, with books, and reads stories to, uh, to uh, rural kids. So for real, thank you for your help. Thank you for, for the introduction. Some of it is uh, not true. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the leader or you know, the founder of Ethiopia Reese. I'm just a simple board member who is passionate, who thinks as an Ethiopian, it's our responsibility to do my share. And I decided to go ahead and take that as a challenge. And I challenge each one of you to do the same. One person could make a difference. This portion is to challenge each one of you to uh, pledge a certain amount. So we have $8,000 plus the 5,000 we just got, we got $13,000. We have a pledge amount of 37,500. This is a dollar for dollar challenge. If we don't raise the same amount of money, we lose that money. Is there anybody out here who wanna pledge $1,000 or more? $1,000. Right there. Volunteers, please go over there and get his name. Thank mm -hmm. you.